so let's move ahead when we say measurement so that is nothing but sensing so what are the things comes as a battery pack sensing so that's first one is voltage and that voltage is of individual cell voltage as well as pack voltage individual cell voltage is important for soc and soh calculation because in a pack the weakest cells and you don't know which one is the weakest cell the soc depends upon weakest cell so in a pack the voltage is important parameter to calculate the soc and soh obviously other parameters will also come for soc and soh but this is the very important parameter if you don't have voltage of individual cells it's very difficult to calculate the soc because the whole pack condition depends upon the weakest cell and we don't know which cell is weakest so we have to keep measuring the voltage of each and individual cell it's also essential for protection if my cell voltage is going beyond the limit then it should be measured and the bms should take action to shut off the battery pack or reduce the functionality of the battery pack how it is being done Me measured using the integrated chip and that is what we say the slave architecture where in the slave we have only this integrated chip which can measure the voltage the next we have current current is also important parameter to measure the soc and soh both it also used to detect the log abuse condition detect and log the abuse condition like if you are trying to draw the current which is beyond the functional limit of the battery pack or because of some reasons because of short circuit if excess current is being drawn it will try to isolate or it will try to shut off the battery pack it keeps critical input to soc and soh if you have to calculate soc and soh not only voltage you also have to measure current continuously and how it is being done it is being done mostly by using current shunt or hall effect sensor the next comes temperature short term cell performance depends upon the temperature long term cell performance also depends upon the temperature and unless you don't measure it continuously because soc is also a function of temperature voltage and current and when i say voltage and current it's ocv internal resistance so short term cell performance prediction depends upon the cell temperature cell degradation and that becomes a long term if you have to identify the cell degradation you need to measure the temperature continuously because the cell degradation is function of temperature so the cell degradation mechanism to find out cell degradation mechanism you need to measure the temperature it's also a critical input for your thermal management system to increase decrease the cooling capacity or cooling load or heating load and all those things and how it can be measured it's mostly measured using the thermistor why thermistor because of the low cost and the most reliable and the various shapes which it can come there are several other things are also available nowadays like infrared sensors sensors you can have a single or multiple infrared sensor which can de detect optical sensor by using a single sensor you can measure the whole pack individual cell temperature but yes lot more thing has to be worked out on on the bms software side in such cases so the easy way is to use thermistor wherever it is required initially you can start with every cells monitoring later on with the help of modeling and simulation and the experimental results you can reduce those sensor and then we have isolation sensing and when it say when we say isolation sensing there is a separate unit isolation monitoring device you use that as well as if there is any abnormalities current or voltage through that also you can detect if in idle it is still drawing some current which bms can detect 
that means there is some problem with the isolation or insulation both. HP battery terminals not connected or I say there is a no leakage current to the chassis of the body or if somehow a live high voltage part is touching to the chassis. In such cases insulation monitoring device should sense and stop. So that is how it is sense. It enhances the safety greatly because if isolation sensing is not done properly either using a separate sensor or using the existing system to detect insulation and isolation several things can live can it uh, several accidental situation can arise for high voltage packs it is a main machine both for low voltage pack it is mostly machine or battery pack. How do we do those things because those signals are basically analog signals a voltage is a continuous when you are sensing continuously current continuous temperature continuous but a microprocessor or microcontroller reads only digital values. So what we use is something known as analog to digital converter ADC. So the first is sensing voltage signals using the ADC. So now you have a analog voltage sensor 0 to 5 volt to minus 5 volt with the time this is how you are sensing how you will convert it into digital signal. So we use ADC where input is this analog signal and output is the digital signal. So it converts digital signals which is fed to the microcontroller. What are the parameters of an ADC? It is a resolution and the bits. If it is if a ADC is of n bit, the number of levels you see it is all discrete level it is not continuous it is a discrete 5 volt or 0, 5 volt or 0. So these all are discrete levels however here it is continuously. So if a ADC of n bit that will have a discrete level of 2 to the power n that means that much of signal it can store or I do not say store it can convert an analog signal to that much of pieces in digital pieces. So that see if any curve can be represented by a square if you reduce the width of a square it is almost like a curve in that case something like this now, now this curve can be approximated like this this is the curve this can be expo approximated like this. So you have more resolution more discrete level then you can keep on reducing this width and it will come most likely to the actual curve condition and that is what is being done using a higher bit of ADC. So you have more number of discrete level. Higher the ADC bit rating, you have more resolution in analog to digital signal mapping. So, a 10 bit of ADC, a 10 bit rating of ADC will have a 2 to the power 10 discrete level, that means 1024 levels. A signal you can divide into 1024 levels and it would give you almost as actual signal as it is. If, if you are using 8 bit, then it would be 2 to the power 8, it would be something like 256 level, discrete level. So your resolution less you may not be able to get the actual signal in such cases. So ADC selection is based on one thing is sampling rate how fast you want to measure the sample and the second is what would be the maximum resolution you look you are looking for. Now how do you relate ADC value to the voltage? So what ADC does it reports ratio matrix value the ratio of the value and then ADC value can be mapped as follows. Now consider the maximum cell voltage is 4.2 volt and with a 8 bit ADC find out read out when I say maximum 4.2 the minimum is 0 volt. So 0 to 4.2 volt that is what you wanted to read through ADC and then if you have a 3.64 volt what would be the reading of ADC? And what you have a 8 bit 
ADC. So, what would be the discrete level? 256. Now, what you have to do? The voltage range ADC resolution by system voltage. So, ADC resolution is 256 by system voltage 4.2 minus 0. So, 0 is minimum voltage, maximum is 4.2. That part we are dividing into 2, 256 number, 256 section. And that is nothing but ADC rating by measured analog voltage. So, what we wanted to measure now? 3.64. And what should be the ADC rating? Now, it is simple. You have 256 discrete level, then you have the delta V, I can say, the max to minimum. So, 4.2 minus 0. And then what is the voltage you wanted to measure using ADC? 3.64. So, what would be the ADC reading? 256 by 4.2 that equal to ADC reading by 3.64 from this ADC reading will come 256 into 3.64 divided by 4.2 and that is 222. So, ADC will give a value to the microprocessor 222. As soon as microprocessor get 222, it says you do the back calculation there, that is it is a 3.64 volt. A home assignment question, an 8 bit ADC is used for reading the voltage across a 5 volt sensor. When I say 5 volt sensor, it is 0 to 5 volt. If the ADC fits the value of 100 to the microprocessor, find out what is the voltage sensed by ADC across the sensor. When I say 5 volt sensor, it is 0 to 5 volt. Similar way, thermistor value, how do we do? So, there are two types of thermistor basically, NTC and PTC. When I say NTC, resistance decrease, decreases with increase in temperature. So, higher the temperature, lower the resistance. When I say PTC, higher the temperature, higher the resistance. So, these two types of sensors, uh, thermistors are available mostly for temperature measurement, NTC type of thermistor is used. How we do it? By using the voltage divider circuit and using ADC. So, this R1 is the resistance, R is the thermistor resistance. So, by using voltage divide, uh, divider uh, circuit, the overall current in the in the circuit is I equal to V R1 plus R thermistor. R1 is known, R thermistor is also known. Now, so what would be the voltage? So, V thermistor is nothing but R thermistor, R1 plus R thermistor and the V of the circuit. And R thermistor is being calculated here, where V1 is the source, volt, source voltage. Now, once you have this, so what we have calculated there is R1, thermistor resistance. Now, if I have a plot of thermistor resistance versus temperature, in that case, we can easily find out what would be the temperature of the system if we are able to measure the resistance there. And how do we measure the resistance? by using the voltage divider circuit. So, example here, a thermistor is placed at the lower leg of voltage divider circuit of 5 volt source and the R1 is 100 kilo ohm. The voltage across the thermistor is 2.5 volt. Using the plot shown here, find the temperature sensed by the thermistor. So, what we have said, R thermistor is nothing but V thermistor V minus V thermistor into R1. R1 we know, we know the source voltage that is V, we also know the thermistor voltage. So, what would be the R thermistor? That comes as 1.1 mega ohm. Now, from the pl plot, you can see where it comes. 0.1 mega ohm is around this place and the what would be the temperature corresponding temperature that is 25 degree centigrade. And how to divide voltage into readable format of the microprocessor that we have already discussed and in the second how to read the voltage of thermistor from that how to what 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 would be the resistance that we have found out and from that resistance what would be the temperature that also we have found out. Now, how do we sense current value? So, current can be sensed in basically in two ways. One is using current shunt. When I say current shunt, it is a very low resistance 
करंट पास इन सीरीज तो करंट संट यूज वेरी लो वैल्यू समथिंग लाइक पॉइंट वन मिलियन हाई प्रिसन रेसिस्टेंस इन सीरीज वाई लो रेसिस्टेंस बिकॉज यू डोंट है लॉसेस ऑफ एनर्जी मच बिकॉज ऑफ द जूल हीटिंग and by sensing the voltage across the sunt using ohms law we find out what is the current going on and these all are calibrated we, you already calibrate you already have a characteristic curve for that one and from that curve you find out what is the current so you have a sunt then that amplifies the signal send it to bms to sense how, what is the current going on and that is nothing but b sunt that that is being measured and r sunt is already known different temperature that you already have uh, value available and then v sunt you measure and then from that you find out what is the i so v sunt by r sunt r sunt is known v sunt you measure and from that you find out what is the i and that signal is amplified sent to the bms to calculate what would be the i what is sent to the amplifier is the voltage across the sunt that it amplifies sent it to the bms bms already have r sunt at different temperature and from there it calculates what would be the r sunt now it knows b sunt and then it calculates what is the i then second one is the hall effect sensor when we say hall effect sensor it's basically a conduct through if current is passing through a conductive coil it generate a emf and that emf is measured sent to the bms using again adc and then it senses how much current is passing through that any question till now 